Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Michael Sterling, and welcome to Broadway World TV. We're coming to you from the Los Angeles Music Center. Very special evening. Tonight, the Center Theatre Group is hosting the opening of Mary Poppins, the U.S. National Tour, which is sitting down here at the Amundsen Theatre right behind me for four weeks. Now, earlier today, my producer Jerry Evans and I had the pleasure of coming down to the theatre and talking to two of the show's stars. I'm not going to give it away too much right here, but I will tell you one of them is Bert the Chimney Sweep, and the other... I'm going to leave that up to you. I have the pleasure of sitting here with Nicholas Romart, who is starring in the U.S. National Tour of Mary Poppins, which opens at the Amundsen Theatre this evening, August 10th. Welcome to Broadway World. Thank you. It is so nice to meet you in person. Thank you. And uh, I cannot tell you how excited that I am personally, mm -hmm. and my producer actually, to see this production. Yeah, this evening. We're excited to be here. And I'm sure that you probably hear that from every single person that you encounter, <laughs> uh, being of, a, of whatever age, whether yeah. it's a, a certain age or very younger, mm -hmm. uh, you know, below that. Uh, I certainly know that I sat in a movie theater on a number of occasions and watched this film. So, so to see it come to life mm -hmm. on the stage yeah. has uh, got to be just as special as the movie was, I'm sure, perhaps more. Oh, yeah. It, it's even more special. And like you said, you know, it's, it's a show for all ages. Everyone loves it. The kids love it. The adults love it, even the third generation, the grandparents love it. Right. It's, it's amazing to see how many people we get to influence and touch and you know, affect their lives on a nightly basis. And there's that great connection between the stage and the audience, and that makes them much more special. Well, let's talk about the music first. Yeah. The, the wonderful score uh, of the original score, of course, from the Ocean Picture being written by the Sherman Brothers. Yes. And uh, Richard Sherman, I believe, is actually coming to the opening this yes, evening, and I hope you have the opportunity to meet him. I'm oh, sure you I've will. Oh, met him if many you, times. Oh, you have? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, there you go. Many times. Oh, well, yes. That He's sounds great. like Richard. He'd be at every oh, opening, yeah. right? <laughs> he loves, he is so present. He loves being here and to participate and be yeah. where we are. It's really great. In the, in the four years I've been involved with the show, I've seen him do dozens of times. You know, I will tell you a little story, if he hasn't told this to you already, but it's a, it's a treasure of a story. He said that... Um, when he and his brother were writing, after they had written the film and it was so successful, he, they would take a meeting with Walt Disney, you know, on a weekly basis. And before every meeting, he, Walt would say, he was standing, staring outside the window of his office, looking at the studio lot, and he would say, sing it, yeah. play, play it. it. And what was that song? Feed the Birds. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. It was Walt's favorite song. So every yeah. meeting started with that opening. <laughs> Isn't that just amazing? It's, it's amazing. Yeah, it, I would go for dinner with uh, with uh, with Richard Sherman and just have some amazing like the stories that come out of his mouth. Like it's just yeah. incredible stories of Walt and, and working at the studio with his brother. And oh, it's incredible. Yeah. So for you to go into something so iconic mm -hmm. as an actor to, to to be a part of this production, you did it on Broadway. Mm -hmm. You started in the ensemble on Broadway, is that That's correct? Right, yeah. And then you assumed the role that you're playing now. That's right. And then you did the first national tour mm -hmm. as well. Yep. And now you're doing a second national tour. That's right. That's right. Did it ever occur to you that this was going to be a part of your life? When Once the show... Never. No. I never. I didn't, I didn't watch the movie when I was, you know, eight or ten and said, hey, I'm going to do that musical one day. It <laughs> yeah. never occurred. And I mean, because it's inevitable that it would become a musical. Or yeah, well, one would hope. I mean, there's yeah. so many great movies that, that are Disney, like Newsies finally is a musical, and that should have been a musical, you know, 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. it's, it's incredible. So, yeah, when, when this movie, when this mu musical finally came to fruition and I auditioned, I was really fortunate to be part of it. And then to be into this, you know, to portray this role now, it's just, it's, it's really a dream come true. Nicholas, you're from Ottawa, Canada. Yes, I am. How did you get into the uh, business of, of entertaining oh, and theater? Show business. <laughs> yes, the show I business. I saw a Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers movie when I was six yeah. years old. I was, uh, I think it was Top Hat. And I was in the hallway of my school. I, I saw it in uh, primary school. And I was under my desk just doing this <laughs> for hours. And my teacher, my school teacher, called my mom and said, can you put him in tap classes? He's driving us crazy. <laughs> so she did. And then uh, I did jazz. I studied ballet. And then I did community theater in my hometown. And then graduated from high school, went to New York, and 
here I am today, never looked back. And your parents were clearly supportive of that, yes. which is very they, important for always, young people wanting to yes. go into this business. Not yes, everybody's yes. parents do that. Yeah, yeah. They've always been very supportive. And my parents have come and seen me in all my shows. And I think my mom, my mother is coming again to opening night. I think it's her 23rd time seeing the show. So. Is she flying in from Canada? Is she still yeah. there in Canada? Yeah, yeah, she's still there. Wow. Yep, yeah. yeah. And has she ever been to Los Angeles? Yes. Oh, uh, she I was here with Mamma Mia, so she came and saw me then. I was here with Wicked, so she came and saw me then all right, as well. All right, so all right. So she's a, and she's not a backstage mother or anything like no, that? No, no. She's a very supportive mother, but <laughs> with the barrier. <laughs> not a crazy stage. Nice. <laughs> of all the things that you've done mm -hmm. in theater, yes. whether it's musical theater or not, mm -hmm. what is your favorite role to date? Could it be this? This and Fierro and Wicked are my two mm -hmm. favorite roles. Uh, for two different reasons, you know. F Fierro, I get to kiss the blonde, I kiss, get to kiss the green, I swing on a rope, I take a <laughs> bow, it's fantastic. And then th this role is, is great. I always seem to fall in love with like women who fly for some reason, so I don't know, the next musical has to have a flying woman, I'll be in it. <laughs> but uh, no, this, this role is just such a, it's a joy. Just I get to tab dance, I get to, he's a jack of all trades, he loves life. and. He just revels in, in all this, this joy and when Mary's around everything is heightened and that much better and, and there's this love that is unconditional for, for Mary and it's just, it's so wonderful to do that again. I, I get, there's that wonderful scene between George Banks and, and Bert that mm -hmm. every night I get teary, I just get this, this wonderful fulfillment of, of the emotion like, and it's, it's just so wonderful to do this every night. Pleasure speaking to you, sir. You Thank you. Well. I look forward to seeing you on stage Definitely. this evening. Yeah, enjoy. Nicholas Dromart, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Some guys have all the luck, and I'm one of them. I am sitting here with the beautiful Rachel Wallace, also known as Mary Poppins. <laughs> Hello. Hi. How are you? Welcome to Broadway World. Thank you so much for having me. I am so excited that you're here. It's We had, I think, the most amazing response we've ever had from an audience last night yes. in our first preview, so yes. I couldn't be more thrilled. All of us. To and that, be here. would you think that's because it was Los Angeles, or what? What was that? I, you know, I've never played LA before, mm -hmm. and what I found in being playing so many cities is that every community is so completely different in terms of their response. So it might be Los Angeles. It might be that we're returning after having played already. Um, I, maybe just all the stars aligned. I, I don't know what it was, well, but it was magical. You know, I'm sure it was. You have to take into consideration that you're starring in one of the most famous stories of all time the most famous motion pictures of all time, mm -hmm. translated to the stage and becoming what it has become. Yeah. I know that I believe worldwide the figures are something that it has taken in over almost almost $650 million. It's done it all has right. uh, played <laughs> to some 10 million people, as I understand. Yes. And uh, you are doing this role. Yeah. And how cool is that for you to be playing Mary Poppins? And I mean, the children must uh, just go wild you know, when they see you first make your entrance, right? I think so. I think it's, I mean, it's an incredible opportunity. And I think I'm not always as aware of what the kids in the audience are thinking. I mean, sometimes we'll get little voices like, where'd Mary Poppins go? Like when I walk <laughs> off stage or, or responding back to us, which is just my favorite part of work. Um, but then when I meet them at the stage door, the little ones particularly, I think are kind of shocked thinking, wait, no, you don't look anything like that woman right. who was just on stage. Right. Who are you, you imposter? So it's sort of like, it's it's a fascinating thing to watch their belief in the audience and then them sort of understand like, oh, okay, this is just a person like I am and right. like my mom is. So it's a very cool experience to be part of. Now, it's also a very physical experience to be a part Absolutely. of. Absolutely. And tell us about what goes into that. How do you have to prepare in the process, when we're first rehearsing this show, going into it, being put into it, prepare for the process of the flying part of it alone? I mean, that's that's strenuous. You know what? I, I actually always say the flying is the easiest oh, thing really? I do. Because I just have to posture and, and, and enjoy the flight. It's, um, you know, I'm not singing at that point. I'm not dancing. I'm not having to worry about any various magic. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a part when I really just get to sort of be really, really, really present and, and enjoy the, the ride. But the, um, it's certainly an incredibly physical show and very physically demanding role. Um, but they really, Disney and the creatives give you a, a really great opportunity to build into that. I don't feel like, you know, I certainly come home with aches and pains at the end of the day, <laughs> but it's, it's, 
you learn it in chunks. Right. And, um, it, you know, the love of what you're doing and the fear of not doing it well enough sort of give you the, the propulsion you need. How is it playing um, opposite Nicholas? It's wonderful. You know, I started with Nicholas. Um, Nick, what I called. We started, um, he was my first Bert. And so sort of finishing up my time on the tour with him has a beautiful symmetry to it. And he's, I mean, he's solid as a rock out yes, there. Yes, I'm sure he is. Yeah. He seems like a charming man and, and with a very extensive background in touring and so Absolutely. forth. Absolutely. Oh my gosh, and yes. Doing the role on Broadway. What is the, what would you say would be the one thing, if anything, that you've learned from, from Nick Drummer? I think he's one of the absolutely or absolute most reliable people I've ever been on stage with. I mean, I don't, a rock could fall on his head and he'd go on stage and deliver the same breathtaking performance every single night. I mean, he's just so solid. And I don't know if that's just his natural energy, if that's something he's learned in this extensive career he's had, but he's really helped me understand like, no matter what is going on anywhere else, this is a place you come and you play and you deliver um, and he does that no matter what always wow so nice to meet you and speak to Me you too, I am lost in your eyes they are so <laughs> beautiful they are so thank blue you. and uh, I cannot wait to see you on stage this evening thank you thank, thank you, you so much for having me my pleasure with a book by Julian Fellows based on similarly titled Cherished Stories by P.L. Travers and the classic 1964 Walt Disney film Mary Poppins, this Disney Cameron Mackintosh spectacular features music and lyrics by the Sherman brothers, Richard and Robert Sherman, with additional music and lyrics by George Stiles and Anthony Drew. It doesn't get any better than this, ladies and gentlemen. I am standing here with the composer of Mary Poppins, Mr. Richard Sherman. How are you, sir? Great. I'm very excited tonight. It's going to be a very thrilling evening. I know that. Well, I know it's going to be one thrilling evening for me because I have never seen your show. Oh, great. Well, you know, it's, it's not just my show. There's a lot yes, of people know, involved then, of in this thing. But um, I'm part of it, and I'm very excited to be here. It's a, a great cast. I've been reading the reviews as they've been traveling across the country, and stellar reviews. Every single, every play, place they play, they knock the people out. And I know it's going to be that way tonight. Well, I had the pleasure of coming down earlier today, Jerry Evans, my producer, and myself, and we interviewed the two stars of tonight's oh, show. Great people. Yes. Couldn't have been lovelier. Nice, nice, gifted people, very talented people, and they give their all every single night. They're just special. I know. Do you still get that same thrill every time that curtain goes up and you come out and see your show? Yes, I do. I <laughs> truly do. I'm a very, I must say it's a little corny, but I... I get a, sh a, tiller, a tear or two when I, when I see it, yes. I bet. Thank and you. for the motion picture, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Sherman and his brother won two Academy Awards, best song and best score, as I recall. Is that correct? That's right. The song was Chim Chim Cheree, the yes. song of the chimney sweep, and the score. We won that in, along with a wonderful man named Erwin Costell, who was our arranger conductor. Uh, he didn't get the award with us, but he deserved it. And I think there was a Grammy Award in there somewhere, too, for oh, the yeah, same project, Oh, yeah, we did project, that, too, right? yeah, yeah. It is so nice of you to stop by. I don't want to keep you because it's late and we all need to get to the theater, but Richard, so nice to see you. Thank you. It's a pleasure to see you again. You're Thank you. great. <laughs> Richard Sherman, Broadway World. Thank you. Having first opened in London's West End during 2004, where it ran for more than three years, Mary Poppins landed on Broadway in late 2006, where it continues to play, making it the 30th longest running show in Broadway history. With four productions currently running on three continents, Mary Poppins has cast not only her spell on adoring audiences at the Amundsen Theater in Los Angeles through September 2nd, but will continue her high-flying trek across the United States well into 2013. For more information, visit www.marypoppins.com. But for tickets for Mary Poppins at the Amundsen Theater, you may purchase them at the Amundsen Theater box office, online at centertheatergroup.org, or simply by calling 
4400.